The first picture you shoot of a flower probably isn't the best shot you can get. Searching for the best angle and composition takes time and even then, it's always best to shoot a series of pictures. At least when you have found a good flower to shoot. Don't think that all the images I shoot are good ones. It really takes time to work a subject and in the process I shoot many captures, trying different angles, compositions and apertures. Now, one of the most important tricks to create wonderful flower portraits is to persist. The first flower you shoot won't be the best shot of the day. Then maybe the second, the third, the fourth or even the tenth one. So how many flowers do you have to shoot to get the best results? Well, if you keep on hopping from one flower to the other, shooting only one, two or three images of each flower, you will probably never succeed in creating the best possible picture. You will then always fall short of your own ability. To maximize your ability, you need to invest time. However, there's a big difference between losing time and investing time. It will be better to invest this time in a few flowers rather than photographing 50 or 100 different ones. If you're constantly hopping from one flower to another, then you're not making the most of the time that you invest. The first two, three, four or five photos you take of a flower will most likely not be the best. It takes time to select, study and photograph your subject. Select the best flower or flowers first and concentrate on these. Study the flower. Look at possible angles and compositions. How is the foreground, the background and are there any supporting subjects present? You do all this without using the camera. Take your time and it will dramatically increase your chances of getting a wonderful picture. And only after this initial study of the flower, you pick up your camera and start shooting. Here's an example of a flower that I shot. I first took my time to select a good flower. A flower that really drew my attention. I liked this one in particular because of its orientation, its shape and the nice curved stem. Of course, I also looked at the background and the foreground options. In total, I did shoot 62 images in 28 minutes and this doesn't include the time I spent searching for the flower or even the initial study when I found it. It's only the actual shooting period, almost half an hour on one single flower. So I did spend quite some time on this flower. This is the first image that I shot. It's an okay image but there's quite some room for improvement. But for a first shot, it's actually quite good. Something to build on. So I tried some other variations of more or less the same composition. Now we're shooting macro and we do this in a small area. This means that small camera movements or composition changes can have a huge impact on the whole image. In the second shot, you see the flower in the front that's covering the main flower too much, so it's worse than the first one. Then I put the camera a little bit more downwards and got this image. It's better than the previous ones. Getting a little closer and I'll get this. And now getting the flower a bit more frontal, not too much. These images are okay, but I really think I can get a better composition. Now, what happens when I tilt the camera to a vertical position and get even closer? Now, that's something different, but it looks better as a horizontal. Maybe with the flower a little bit more upwards. Yes, I like this. So I only make small changes in composition. Then I shot the flower a bit more from the top, at the same distance. No, that can be better. It's not a good composition. So I shoot some variations. This one and 
this one. That's better. As you can see, small camera movements will have a huge impact on the feel of the whole image. Now, maybe a little bit more backwards with the camera. This one and this one. Okay, I like this. But there's still room for improvement. The flower a bit higher in the frame, small adjustments at a time. I like the shot, but maybe it'll be better as a vertical. Let's try that. Okay, that looks good. I really like it. So, variating between horizontal and vertical give you more options. Now, what happens when I shoot it from a little bit further off? Okay, that can be improved. Maybe with a different aperture. Going from f2.8 to 3.2, 3.5, f4.5 and f5.6. Now, that looks different. The feel of the image totally changed. So, don't only experiment with different angles and compositions, but also try different apertures. I open up the aperture again to f2.8 and I try to get a more minimalistic look, using the shooting through technique. Also here I try different apertures. Changing camera position a little bit and I get this one. Here the smaller aperture really doesn't work. Ok, let's try this one in a vertical. Also a nice minimalistic image, but there's room for improvement, so I take some more shots. This one is a lot better. Getting closer again, trying some compositions, vertical again. Looks nice. I really like the curve of the stem. And it has to be possible to get a good horizontal one with it. Now, that looks nice. I love the position of the flower and the line. Now trying to get it better. Remember, small changes in camera position and viewpoints can make a huge difference when shooting macro. Yes, this is a winner. I love it. After this one, I tried some more compositions, like this one. And finished working on the flower. So, it took me almost 30 minutes to shoot all these images. And during that period, I have shot some nice ones. But the best one, I shot almost at the end of the 30 minute session. Now, if I would have stopped at the first couple of images that I liked, I would never have been able to get this wonderful capture. It's only through working with it for a longer time that I was able to get this result. So, taking your time really pays off, if you want to get the best possible result. Now, I don't always spend 30 minutes with the same flower. If I selected a flower and I notice after a couple of shots that it isn't going anywhere, then I hop on to the next one. So, it's a balance that you'll have to find. If you find a good flower, stick with it for a while. But don't jump too fast from one flower to the next. And if you were thinking that all my images are good, well, you're wrong. I only show you my best images. This flower was a real winner for me. In the session I succeeded to create a series of interesting and beautiful pictures. But not all flowers that I select are this successful. So. Take your time if you're shooting a good flower. Try different angles, distances, backgrounds, foregrounds and apertures. Only by doing this you'll be able to get the best possible results. In my opinion, investing time in a single flower is one of the best ways to learn and practice your skills. How to find the best composition, the best fore and background and how to create an amazing dreamy bouquet is all explained in great detail in the Flower Art Photography Masterclass. Learn to look at the world through different eyes.